Hi everyone, Eric from TI here, and today we're going to look at the, uh, the C4, and we're going to explain how the C4 is involved in continental drift, plate tectonics, that kind of thing. And something interesting, did you know that scientists estimate the Earth is over 4 billion years old, billion with a B? Uh, so what's, what's really weird is the seafloor, the oldest region of the seafloor is only about 200 million years old. So how can we have this uh, discrepancy between the age of the Earth and the age of the oldest part of the seafloor? Well, the answer is related to what's happening under the sea at the trenches and the ridges of Earth's crust. And so in this simulation that we're going to do today, we're going to analyze the motion of the continents and the seafloor age to determine what's really happening. So uh, a little bit of background information. Earth's crust, it, it's divided into seven major plates. So you can think about the continents and the continents kind of sit on top of those plates. Uh, these plates are always in continuous motion. They're, they're moving all the time. So from year to year, North America is not in the same place. The movements are very small, but they're not in the same place from year to year, which is interesting. You probably didn't know that. Uh, ridges and trenches define the edges of those plates. And so the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, so it runs um, sort of, uh, it runs down the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it runs, it kind of separates North and South America from Europe and Africa. So it kind of splits and you'll see that in the model here in a little while. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is, is the underwater mountain range that runs from Iceland down to Antarctica. And at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, plates are moving away from one another. This causes uh, magma from beneath the crust to rise up. And when the magma enters the sea floor, it cools and harding, uh, hardens, uh, forming underwater mountains. So we're going to explore some of that today in the simulation. I'm really excited about this. We're talking about, you know, uh, giant masses of land that are actually moving. The Earth is a dynamic system. And so today we're going to get a little taste of that at a very large scale, all right? Uh, if you wanna follow along uh, the video and take notes, that's fine. If you wanna actually participate in the simulation yourself and do it yourself, uh, you're welcome to do so by going to our website at www.education.ti.com and you need to download the software called TI Inspire Premium uh, Software, TI Inspire CX Premium Software, that is. Uh, and then you can find this particular activity called C4 Spreading uh, under Earth Science at our website, www.scienceinspired.com. Okay, all right, let's get started. Okay, so I have the activity C4 Spreading opened in the TI Inspire CX Premium software. You can use this activity in the software like I'm gonna do today, or if you have a TI Inspire CX or CX2 graphing calculator, you can use this activity on those as well. So it'll work in either the software or the uh, TI Inspire CX Grabbing Calculator. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go uh, page to page here and we're gonna explore some of the concepts and then uh, in, a, in a few minutes here, we're gonna explore a simulation and then answer some questions based on what's happening in the simulation, okay? So uh, this page 1.2 talks about Earth's crust being divided into seven major plates that are in continuous motion. The one we're going to focus on today is uh, this mid-Atlantic uh, ridge right here. It's a big mountain range. It goes from um, way up north to way down south. And so, uh, and then you can see some of the other plates as well. We're not going to spend a lot of time on, on those particular plates. Uh, we're just going to focus in on this, this ridge to, to try to use it as a way to understand how old um, the earth is and why there's a discrepancy between the oldest part of uh, the seafloor versus the age of the earth, okay? Uh, so these concepts, ridges and trenches, these are uh, sort of define the edges of the plates. Um, so these are either mountains or they're big valleys where that, that allow magma to come up and then form mountains. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the underwater mountain range running from Iceland to Antarctica. And at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, plates are moving away from one another. So they're, they're pulling away from one another. And, and as a result, Magma, which is a really hot liquid rock from beneath the crust, uh, rises up into the water. And then as it hits the, uh, the seafloor, it cools and it hardens, forming sort of this out underwater mountain range, which is really kind of neat. Okay. All right. Uh, first question of this activity, which of the following would you most expect to occur at the mid-ocean uh, ridge? So the mid-Atlantic ridge or mid-ocean ridge. Um, 
what do you think would happen? And if you want to pause the video and take a moment, think about that, um, that's fine. Uh, so would it be A, volcanic activity, B, strong earthquakes, or C, older crust sinking down into the mantle, uh, the Earth's mantle? Um, well, like we said, so uh, as, as uh, the ridges pull away from one another, as the plates move away from one another, a, big, a bunch of magma comes up from beneath the crust and rises up, forming sort of these mountains. And you may be aware that uh, volcanoes uh, are the results of, of those kinds of uh, geologic activities. So a uh, volcano is formed uh, in part from the sort of the, uh, uh, the, the upwelling of magma. Um, volcanoes harden, form these sort of mountains, and then um, uh, lava, uh, magma, that forms in the lava can come up through the volcano and out into the earth. So this is happening underwater as well. So there's volcanic activity, not at all, not only happens on the land, but it also happens underwater too. So, uh, so the answer would be A. Okay, uh, let's see. So this is the uh, simulation page and we're gonna follow the directions here. So it says that we need to select a point on the South American plate drag the measure distance tool to the opposite point on the African plate. So if we had a big tape measure, a very large tape measure, and we were measuring from one continent to the next, you can kind of think about it that way. Uh, select the time clicker to advance the spread of the mid-Atlantic Ridge by 10 million years. So we're gonna, we're gonna sort of go through time and 10 million year increments. Repeat the measurement between the two points. Select reset from the document tools menu. All right, so now we're gonna uh, we're gonna basically we're going back in time, 120 million years, and we're going to measure the distance that the South American plate is from the African plate uh, in 10 million year increments from 120 million years ago up until today. And so we'll start by just uh, clicking on these little dots that are on each of the plates, and you'll notice that uh, the data is being collected on a different page in a table. So we're collecting data. Uh, and I'm going to bump this up to 110 million years ago. You may have noticed the screen changed a little bit. The plates moved apart. And by an additional distance, looks like uh, by about 633 kilometers. Um, and we're going to bump up another 10 million years. And you'll notice that the plates are uh, they're moving away from one another. Hard to tell now, but the data so far suggests that it's at a pretty consistent rate. Looks like about 600, um, about 630, about 630 kilometers, maybe, uh, every 10 million years. <clears throat> so uh, 70 million years, I'm gonna move on a little faster. 60 million years. You may see that graph in the bottom left of your screen also that's forming. 50 million years. What's neat about this is we could use this historical data to predict where the plates will be 10 million, 20 million, 100 million years from now, assuming things, the rate stays the same. So uh, by studying the past, it gives us a little uh, bit of an opportunity to predict the future with some, some level of certainty. All right, and then present day, this is where we are today. This is what our, our uh, the C4 looks like today. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's it. So, uh, so we have gone through time um, 120 million years ago to today. And you can see these numbers increasing and they like I said they appear to increase around 630 637 uh, maybe kilometers every 10 million years and we know that's consistent because we have a nice straight line in our graph if we had a difference in rate uh, from you know one 10 million year segment to the next we might see a, a bump in the graph we might see a bump uh, up here, or uh, you know, maybe it didn't go as far. You see that down here, but it looks pretty consistent, and so that's interesting. That that gives us the ability to predict that in 10 million years from now, you can kind of see 
um, the data may be uh, up here. Maybe, let's see, if we're um, 8,000 kilometers, maybe we'd be at um, uh, 8,630 something kilometers. So, so it gives us some predictability, which is really neat. All right, question two. According to the graph, as the age of the Earth increases, the distance between South America and Africa, does it A, increase, B, decrease, uh, C, stay the same? Well, of course, you know, we saw that uh, um, we started off where African plate and the South American plate were right next to each other. And then over time, they moved further and further apart. We have data that also uh, captures this. So uh, we could say that according to the graph, as the age of the Earth increases, the distance between those two plates also increases. Okay, uh, question three. According to this simulation, each plate is moving at a rate of A, 25 kilometers every million years, B, 33 kilometers every million years, or C, 67 kilometers every million years. So uh, we saw that our graph is a straight line, which means that the rate of change is the same from every 10 million year segment. So all we really have to do is grab the difference between um, two adjacent points. So um, two points that are right next to each other. And so I'm going to take a look at, I'm, gonna, I'm writing these numbers down just so I can uh, use them a little bit later. I'm going to use uh, 20 million years ago, the distance was 6,730. And then 10 million years ago, the distance was 7,363. I'm going to come on over here to my calculator. And I'm going to make some quick calculations. I'm going to take the difference of 7,363 um, and uh, 6,730. And we get a number uh, 633 uh, kilometers. Now, the question didn't ask me every 10 million years. It asked me every million years. So that means I have to take 633 and divide it by 10. And when I do that, I get an answer that is, um, oops, I got to do an estimate here. There it is, 63.3. And so the closest answer to that in this question uh, would be 67. And so 63.3, uh, um, you know, there may be slight subtle differences from year to year, but we're talking very large numbers. So a difference of, um, you know, three and a half kilometers isn't very, very much. So we're going to go with 67 kilometers every million years. So every million years, the plates are moving that much. And then you could really have some fun with this. You could say, okay, well, how much are the plates moving apart every year from, from one year to the next? I'll leave that with you uh, and you can check that out. And so if you know that every million years is 67 kilometers, all you need to do is um, divide this by whatever unit time you wanna measure it by uh, to check it out. All right, question four, if you were to compare a sample of ocean crust next to a mid-ocean ridge with a sample very far from the ridge, what might you notice? And so uh, the options are sample near the ridge is much younger. The sample near the ridge is much older. Uh, the sample near the ridge is the same age as the sample far from the ridge. Okay, well, again, so if you remember, ridges are formed from um, basically from volcanic activity. So from magma that's rising up from the um, Earth's interior, coming into the, up to the ocean floor, and then forming new mountain ranges. So that's a new rock that's being formed. So um, reason, it seems reasonable that uh, the sample that's closest to the ridge is probably gonna be the newest rock that's formed, therefore it's the younger um, sample. So that hopefully that makes sense. Um, because the, the further away you get, we saw in the simulation, uh, as these things pull apart, all of this rock that's formed here, all of that, that used to be net right next to the ridge, but it keeps getting pulled apart further and further. Therefore, um, we know how old that is. And, and so uh, this is the new stuff that's closest to the ridge uh, versus the 
120 million year stuff that's that's over on this part of the graph. Okay. Uh, let's see. So next question is, what evidence from the graph supports the idea that new C4 is uh, being created? And so, um, you know, you, you might want to pause the video and think about that question uh, a little bit. But, you know, from my point of view, I'm going to keep rolling. But you're welcome to pause the video, think about it, and then start the video again to find out kind of where my head is. But um, uh, basically, the graph is showing us that the distance between the continental plates, the, the, um, uh, the, these large uh, plates, is increasing over time. And so this was uh, 120 million years ago. They were pretty close to one another, 400 kilometers away. And today, they're 8,000 kilometers away. Okay? So, uh, you know, because of that, you know, we... we Obviously, there's new C4 being created to replace the C4 um, that's, or the two plates that are being pulled apart. There's got to be something that fills in that gap. And so that's how we know that that's new land, that's uh, new C4. And it's from the magma that's coming up, cooling off, hardening, turning into mountains, and um, that continues to get pulled apart uh, over time. So the graph kind of tells us that the C4s... Uh, increasing the the surface area of the seafloor between south america and africa is increasing and it's increasing because those plates are pulling apart all right next question if new ocean forest created at the mid-atlantic ridge propose an explanation for why the earth's total crust is not increasing how could this explain why the age of earth is four billion years old while the oldest region of crust is only 200 million years old and now I would like you to pause the video. I really want you to think about this question. Think about what could be happening to explain the discrepancy between the Earth's age. And this is an estimated age by scientists. The scientists have evidence that suggests the Earth is 4 billion years old. But the sea crust, the oldest part of the sea crust, is only 200 million years old. What's going on there? And so I'll pause a moment. I'll let you pause the video. Okay, assuming you've paused the video um, and you're coming back to, to listen to a possible explanation. So, while new crust is created at the mid-ocean ridges, like the mid-Atlantic ridge, for example, old crust is being destroyed somewhere else. So, the crust is continuously being recycled at the trenches. So, the trenches are the parts of the... Um, uh, the trenches are the parts where... Um, you know, uh, one plate's here, and the more dense plate kind of subducts and goes underneath the other plate. And, and that subduction, um, that, that rock gets um, pushed down into the Earth's interior, turned into magma, and recycled, essentially, which is kind of neat. So, uh, so basically, <laughs> there's sort of this slow factory of taking old rock, turning it into new rock. Um, and so that's what's going on, but just at a massive, massive scale, a planetary scale, which is kind of cool. All right, so uh, so this could explain why, you know, um, the new crust is only the newest, or the oldest crust is only 200 billion years old, yet the Earth is uh, 4 billion years old. So kind of cool. All right, uh, with that, that's the end of this particular lesson. Uh, hopefully it made sense to you. Hopefully you understood uh um, this whole process and, and how these, these things kind of work. Um, I'm going back in time again just to sort of show you 120 million years ago what, uh, what Earth um, may have looked like. And so, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it's interesting. Our planet's a dynamic system that's always changing. It's always changing. It's never the same. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please check out more video lessons uh, at our YouTube channel. It's all one word, TI Calculators. And I uh, look forward to doing another one of these with you. And you, again, you can find this lesson on our website. You can download the software on the website. If you have a calculator already, you can download it to the calculator and use it for free. All right, with that, uh, have a good day and thank you very much.